Hello and welcome to the Royal Society of Medicine OSCE series, a comprehensive set of OSCE video guides covering common clinical examinations and procedures. Today, Dr. Robbie Rackett, consultant cardiologist, will be taking you through the cardiovascular examination in a step-by-step -step approach, followed by a more detailed guide focusing on the common clinical signs and pathologies to help you through your exams. Hello, Harley. I'm Dr. Robbie Rackett. Is it all right if I examine you today? Yes, of course. Great, would you like to lie back? Introduce yourself. Are you comfortable? Yep. Great. Confirm the patient's name and age. Explain the examination and seek consent. Wash your hands. Position the patient at 45 degrees and ensure adequate exposure of chest and arms. Observe for dyspnea and scars. A midline stenotomy is performed for coronary artery bypass grafting and aortic valve replacement. A lateral thoracotomy is performed for mitral valve replacement. Listen out for an audible mechanical heart valve. Inspect the bedside for paraphernalia including walking aids, GTN spray and cigarettes. Now look at your hands please. Turn them over. Feel for skin temperature to assess peripheral perfusion. Assess for capillary refill time. Put your fingertips together like so. Observe the nail beds for peripheral cyanosis and for clubbing. Great. Cardiovascular causes of clubbing include endocarditis, congenital heart disease and atrial myxomas. I'm just going to look at one of your fingers. Inspect for cigarette tar staining. Inspect for peripheral stigmata of infectious endocarditis. The peripheral stigmata of infectious endocarditis include splint hemorrhages, which are small spots of blood under the nail bed, oslinodes, which are tender, red, and raised lesions, Janeway lesions, which are small, non-tender erythematous macules or nodules on the palm. To feel your pulse. Palpate the radial pulse with three fingers and assess for its key features. Rate, rhythm, volume, character. The rhythm may be regular, known as sinus rhythm. It may be regularly irregular, as occurs in second degree heart block. Or it may be irregularly irregular, as occurs in atrial fibrillation. The pulse may be of normal character. A slow rising or plateau pulse is indicative of aortic stenosis. A collapsing or water hammer pulse is indicative of aortic regurgitation or patent ductus arteriosus. Now on both sides. Palpate both radial pulses simultaneously to look for radio radial delay. Can feel for the pulse in your right groin. Palpate the radial pulse and femoral yes. pulse simultaneously to look for radiofemoral delay. Radio radial delay and radiofemoral delay may be secondary to aortic dissection or coarctation of the aorta. Look up to the ceiling. Look for conjunctival pallor. Look in and around the eye for signs of hyperlipidemia. Corneal arcus and xanthalasma are signs of severe hyperlipidemia. Malar flush is a sign of mitral stenosis. Open your mouth wide. Touch the roof of your mouth with your tongue. Inspect the mouth for central cyanosis, a high arched palate and poor dentition. And relax. I'm just going to just feel the pulse in your neck. Palpate the carotid pulse for volume and character. Position the patient at a 45 degree angle with the head turned to the left and locate the double waveform pulsation of the JVP between the sternal and clavicular heads of the sternocleidomastoid. Assess the jugular venous pressure for height and waveform. The height of the JVP is measured from the sternal angle to the site of pulsation and is usually less than three centimeters. The jugular venous pressure is an indirect measure of central venous and right atrial pressure. An elevated JVP may be caused by heart failure, right heart strain, fluid overload,
pericardial effusion and cardiac tamponade, constrictive pericarditis, where there is a paradoxical rise of the JVP during inspiration, known as Cushmull's sign, and superior vena caval obstruction, where the JVP is elevated but non-pulsatile. Have you got any pain in your abdomen? No, I don't. Do you mind if I just gently press on your tummy? Of course. Elicit the hepatojugular reflux to confirm position of the JVP. Do this by applying firm pressure to the right upper quadrant and watch for a rise in the level of the JVP pulsations. I'm now just going to examine your chest, if I may. Feel for the most infralateral pulsating point of the heart, which is usually in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. Note the character of the apex beat and whether it is displaced. A displaced apex beat may indicate left ventricular hypertrophy or cardiomegaly. The character of the apex beat may be tapping in mitral stenosis, heaving in aortic stenosis, and thrusting in mitral or aortic regurgitation. Use the flat of the hand to palpate for thrills over the precordium and for heaves at the left parasternal edge. A thrill is a palpable murmur which may be associated with aortic stenosis and a ventricular septal defect. A parasternal heave is associated with right ventricular hypertrophy. I'm going to listen to your heart now. Breathe in. Stop. And breathe away. Listen over the tricuspid, pulmonary and aortic areas with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. And breathe away and over the mitral area with the bell of the stethoscope. The first heart sound reflects the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valves. The second heart sound reflects the closure of the aortic and pulmonary valves. Determine the site, timing, character and pitch of any murmurs and the presence of additional heart sounds. And relax. Hold your breath. Auscultate over the carotid pulse and the axilla for radiation of murmurs. The site, timing, character, pitch and radiation of the murmur give important clues as to the nature of the valvular pathology. Aortic stenosis is best heard in the aortic area in the second intercostal space at the right sternal edge. It is a harsh, high-pitched, ejection systolic murmur that radiates to the carotid and is associated with a slow rising pulse. Aortic regurgitation is best heard at the lower left sternal angle. It is an early diastolic murmur associated with a collapsing pulse. Mitral stenosis is best heard in the mitral area located in the fifth intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line. It is a rumbling mid-diastolic murmur associated with a tapping apex beat. Mitral regurgitation is also best heard in the mitral area, located in the fifth intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line. It is a pan-systolic murmur that radiates to the axilla. Prosthetic mitral valves may be heard as a loud ticking first heart sound that is audible from the end of the bed. Can you just tilt to the left side and put your left hand behind your head? Perform reinforcement manoeuvres to help detect diastolic murmurs. With the bell on the apex, ask the patient to roll onto his left side and hold his breath in expiration to reinforce the murmur of mitral stenosis. Thank you. Straighten up again. Sit straight and if you could lean forward as far as you can. And breathe in. With the diaphragm over the left the lower way. sternal edge, ask the patient to sit forwards and hold his breath in expiration to reinforce the murmur of aortic regurgitation. And breathe away. I'm just going to listen to the back of your chest now. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. Listen for the bibasal crepitations of pulmonary edema. And relax. My back again. So you're going to feel the pulses in your feet and to feel your shin. A 
Apply firm but gentle pressure to the ankle. Residual indentation of the skin after the pressure is released may indicate pitting edema, a sign of fluid overload and heart failure. Thank you very much. Thank the patient and help him to dress. We thank you for watching and for more information and videos please go to rsm.co.uk forward slash OSCE series.